So you probably frequently hear people saying that you need to turn on two-factor authentication or 2FA on your accounts to add extra security. But do you know which types of 2FA are more secure or which ones you should implement on your accounts? Today, we're gonna to talk about the four most common types of two-factor authentication and some of the pros and the cons of each. Hi, I'm William, and welcome back to another session of 5-Minute Friday Cybersecurity for Small and Medium Businesses. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification so that you get an alert when we release future episodes of 5-Minute Friday Cyber and other videos. Okay, let's put up five minutes on the clock and start talking about two-factor authentication. So briefly, two-factor authentication is a security control or implementation that you can add to your accounts. When you log in, it requires an additional form of authentication to verify that you are who you say you are. And 2FA is based on a couple cornerstones, if you will. When we authenticate, we usually are using something we know. 2FA seeks to further validate you are who you say you are by adding a out of band, I like to call it, type of authentication. So if you're logging in with a username and password, something you know, then 2FA will use either something you have or somewhere you are. Now, when you think about it, when you log into an account, you're using your username and password, something you know. Two-factor authentication seeks to further authenticate you by using a, what I like to call out of band method of authentication. So if you're logging in with a username and password, something you know, then 2FA will use something you are, biometric data, somewhere you are, your location, or something you have, a USB key or something of that nature to further authenticate you. So the first method of two-factor authentication and the most common is SMS 2FA. And this is simply when you log into an account, you receive an SMS code to your device and you put in that five or six digit code and it verifies that you are who you say you are. This can be either to your SMS or sometimes they even go to email. The benefits of this is it does not require an app and it works with phones that are not even smartphones. If they are just SMS based phones, they can still receive these authentication text messages with those codes to input. Some of the disadvantages are first, some people might not be comfortable giving their phone number to a website or an um, account that they have created because unfortunately some organizations use that data for advertising. Not mentioning whether that's ethical or not, but it has, has been done. Another big disadvantage of this is it does open the individual up to SIM swapping attacks. And this is an attack in which the attacker contacts your phone provider and they social engineer them into changing the phone number on their SIM card to your phone number. And then when you receive the SMS authentication, they get the code and they put it in and they can get into your accounts. And the final disadvantage that I don't like about SMS is it's too easy to fish an individual. Uh, we do it all the times on penetration tests, social engineering engagements, where we will set up scenarios, we'll call an individual, send them a text in a certain way, and we can get these codes off of them. Okay, the second type of 2FA that we're gonna talk about is the Authenticator Apps or TOTP authentication based on the time-based one-time password protocol. This is also the protocol that is used behind the scenes in websites where you can log in with another account. Uh, when you go to a website and it says log in with Twitter, log in with Facebook, log in with Google, that is the behind the scenes underlying protocol that is being used as well. The way this type of 2FA works is when you set up your account, you usually have an app, be it Authy or Google Authenticator, the LastPass Authenticator. Um, there's various apps to do it. And the, the site will give you a QR code. You open your app, you scan that QR code, and it syncs them. The good thing about this is the secret key is stored on your device. And then thereafter, a six digit code is cycled every 30 seconds. You get a new code every 30 seconds. When you log in, you go get the present code, you put that in and you can 2FA and get into your account. A good thing about this is it works when you're not connected to a mobile network because the secret key is stored inside the app and everything happens in the app. You don't have to be online for this to work. Now, some of the disadvantages are if your phone is lost or stolen, you could lose permanent access to your accounts if you did not save that QR code, if you didn't take a picture of it, if you didn't save your backup codes that you usually get when you set up a new account. If you don't have those, you could be permanently locked out of your accounts. Another disadvantage is some people find it quite inconvenient to have to unlock their phone, open it up, pull up an app, and put that in every time they authenticate, especially if they're authenticating across multiple devices frequently. The third type of two-factor authentication is push-based authentication. And this is the type of authentication we see in Apple products. We see it in the Duo 2FA solution. And what happens is when you log into an account, whatever type of account that is, the 2FA mechanism prompts you on a device that you are logged into. Uh, we see this with Apple devices. You get a prompt, someone just tried to log in from this location, do you approve or do you deny? And you can do whichever. 
Now, a good thing about this is a lot of times you see the location of the individual who is trying to log into your account. And this can help you find phishing attacks if you're paying attention. Similarly, it is harder for an attacker to fish you to get your codes for this because codes aren't given. You simply approve or deny. Now, that being said, it is not impossible for an attacker to social engineer your employees to approving or denying their request to log in. But it is a lot harder if your individuals are aware of the situation. Now, some disadvantages of the 2FA are, first of all, it is a, not a standardized protocol. Apple has their own implementation, Duo has their own implementation, and many other apps and sites have their own way of doing 2FA with push notifications. And the final disadvantage is mobile devices that do not have, uh, are not smartphones, don't have mobile data connections and are only SMS-based phones, this would not work on those types of devices. That could be a disadvantage to think about. And the final type of 2FA that we want to talk about is FIDO UTF or security keys. And this is actually one of my favorite types of 2FA right now. The way this works is when you log into an account, you have a physical device. Usually it's a USB type key and they can communicate via NFC, USB or Bluetooth most of the time. And you simply plug that device into your computer, mobile device, you can use NFC, you touch it up against your phone and that generates a 2FA code that it puts into the device. It responds to the prompt with. Now, one of the great things about this is it's virtually impossible to fish someone to allow them into your account because they have to physically have the device. There's no code you know that you can give them. Another benefit that would could help with your employees spotting phishing attacks is say you are sent a phishing email and you go to a link and you think it's a legitimate site and you log in and you're prompted for 2FA because they're trying to be realistic, it's gonna be impossible for your device to put in a 2FA code and it won't work because it does not recognize the site. And that could be an alert that you just made a mistake and you signed into a non-legitimate account. Now, some of the disadvantages are, first of all, not every browser or app or website that you're using supports this. It's becoming more universal. Um, we see it being used at more and more sites, but still presently it is not universally accepted. And a final disadvantage is some of your employees might find it inconvenient to have to keep up with the key. I always point out security is not convenient, but it's something to think about. If your employees lose their key, that could be a deal to reset that back up and get them back into their accounts. So to reiterate, it's very important if you are using an authenticator app or TOTP, time-based one-time authentication passwords, to take a picture of the QR code when you set that up and save those backup codes. That can be a lifesaver should you get locked out of your account. So that wraps up today's session of the 5-Minute Friday Cybersecurity Tips for Small and Medium Businesses. If you need help with the cybersecurity at your organization, feel free to reach out and contact us at the link in the description, and we'll be glad to help you make your small businesses more secure.